Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And a special welcome to everyone who's joining us on Facebook Live. We're so glad that you are here with us and worshiping with us. You might notice today, if you look around, that we probably have more kids today in worship than we might normally. And so, Welcome to all of our kids. Um, we are trying something where uh, when we're having a communion Sunday, we're not going to have Sunday school so that we have a chance for all of our families to worship together. So um, we're so grateful, kids, that you're here, and um, we're really, really glad to have you in worship today. If you're new here or on the newer side here, if you would, please take a second and fill out one of the bright blue and green connect cards that's in the pew rack in front of you. You can let us know how we can be in touch and also tell us if there's any particular areas of ministry that you'd like to hear more about. And you can just place that in the offering plate later on in the service. When anyone walked in, did you suddenly smell a delicious smell of bacon? Did that? Did that happen? Okay, well, um, some of you, I bet, knew about this ahead of time and came early and got some breakfast. But if you missed it, don't worry. Um, for the rest of the summer through Labor Day, our United Methodist men will be cooking us breakfast every single Sunday morning. Uh, so they will be uh, cooking between 9 in the morning and 10.15. So come early next week and get your breakfast. It is always truly the best breakfast restaurant in town, I would say. We have several fun fellowship events coming up close. Um, the next is on Saturday, July 20th. This is a gathering of our empty nesters and friends group. So if you are in that stage of life, um, I know that they would love to have you. You can chat with Donna Pinckney for more information um, and see some more details also in your right now insert. The day after that, on Sunday, July 21st, the Racial Unity Group is going to be hosting a movie showing and discussion of the movie The Help. You can either uh, screen the movie in the fellowship hall with us or uh, watch it at home and come and chat about it. We'll have popcorn and snacks and I know a really meaningful conversation. Finally, um, we are getting close to the United Women in Faith's annual Low Country Boil. That is going to be held on Friday, July 26th. And if you'd like to come to that and get a yummy, yummy plate of food and hang out with some good friends, you can purchase a ticket after worship today or next week as well. I believe that those are all of the announcements that we have today. So now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. <clears throat>
There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord There are sweet expressions on each face And I know they feel the presence of the Lord Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove Stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Good morning. I'm David Haley, one of your associate pastors, and it's my joy to uh, lead us in our congregational prayer this morning. One of the integral parts of our worship is when we join our hearts and our voices together in prayer. And I'm going to invite you to do that now as we pray together our congregational prayer that you'll find printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, in this hour of worship, open our ears to hear you, our lips to praise you, our minds to understand you, our hearts to love you, and when we leave, our hands to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 128, He Leadeth Me. I invite you to find a hymnal and stand as you're able as we join our voices singing God's praises. Number 128.
And let's remain standing as we affirm our common faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Before you're seated, let's greet one another as we pass the peace of Christ. now we continue in our worship with the reading of the psalm for July, and Amanda, Ma Amanda Mountford is going to come and read for us. Good morning. Today I'll be reading um, from Psalm 84. I'm going to be reading from the NIV Bible. Please hear the word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set in pilgrimage, as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I come with joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, in awe and wonder to recall his life laid down for me, his life laid down for me. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share each proud division in the love that makes us, makes us one, and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. Together met, together bound, we'll go out different ways, and as his people. 
people in the world will live and speak his praise will live and speak his praise i have the privilege now of getting to lead us in prayer will you join me now as we go before god in prayer Holy and loving God, thank you for gathering us together today in your name. Thank you for your presence that greeted us when we took our first breath this morning and that has brought us into this place. God, thank you that your love is always more expansive than we imagine. While we spend our time drawing lines in the sand and deciding who's in and who's out, you open your arms to all who will come. Thank you for the promise that you gave your only son that whoever, whoever believes in him, will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus, teach us to love the way that you do. We pray today for our high school mission trip to El Salvador that will leave on their work this week. We pray for all of the students who are going, as well as for the adult leaders. God, may their hearts be open to learn from the people of Huachapan, El Salvador, and would their hands be extended in humble service. We pray for our community of Wrightsville Beach and Wilmington. God, let this be a place where your kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for our country. God, especially as we prepare for another election year, help us to value people over politics. We pray for your world, especially for Israel and Gaza, that your peace would break through. We pray for the sick, for the suffering, the lonely, the heartbroken, and the afraid. And we pray for all those whose needs are especially close to our hearts today. And we lift them up before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but that you listen to them and that you've proved yourself time and time again to be faithful and trustworthy. And so, God, trusting in your unfailing love, help us to mean what we say as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to transition now into a time of reflection and giving. I'd like to remind you that when we receive our offering each week, it truly is an act of worship. This is a chance for us to practice generosity, to practice trusting God, and to show what we value. I'd like to remind you, as always, that in addition to giving a gift using the offering plate, you can also always scan the QR code that is on your bulletin. And for everyone who's joining us on Facebook Live, you can also use our website, rightsvilleumc.org. Now let us continue to worship God.
children's sermon if there's any kids who'd like to come and join me up front. Good to see all of you today. Thank you guys so much for coming up and joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Pastor Julia, and today I have a really cool story to tell you guys about. Um, and I'm going to use this spot here to show you some things. So if you are having trouble seeing, uh, maybe ask a friend to switch spots or, or scooch a little bit so you can see. So our story starts at the very, 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 very beginning. In the beginning, God made the whole world, and it was really good. And then God made people. God made people in all different colors and sizes and shapes and with all different kinds of personalities and hair colors and eye colors and everything. And it was really, really good. Well, it didn't take very long before people started to not live the way that God wanted them to live, the best ways to live. And so God had a really good idea, which was that God decided to call one group of people out called the Israelites. And he said that they would be his people. And God didn't do this because God loved the Israelites more than everybody else, but because they had a really special job to do, which was that they were supposed to stay kind of separate and focus really hard on living the way that God wanted them to live. And then, eventually, they would be a really good example for everyone else, and everyone else would learn how to love God, too. Well, after a while, sometimes it went well, sometimes it didn't go so well. And... After a while, the Israelites sometimes thought that the reason that they were separate was because they were the best and because they were more loved and more special. Well, one day, someone really special came that you all know about named Jesus. And Jesus was one of the Israelites. And Jesus taught all of the Israelites, but also helped them to start to see things in a new way. Well, after Jesus died and then was raised from the dead and went back to heaven, all of the people who were Jewish, who were Israelites and still wanted to follow Jesus, they kept trying to follow Jesus. And one of them was named Peter. And one day, Peter had a really crazy dream. Have you ever had a weird dream before? Mm -hmm. This was like the weirdest dream ever. Because he had a dream that God wanted him to spend time with all of the other people and to not stay separate anymore. And this was really hard to understand. It took Peter three times to understand this because it was so confusing to him. But he finally came through God's grace to understand that, that now because of Jesus, they weren't supposed to stay separate anymore. Instead, they were supposed to be there in the middle with everyone. And that all the people, all the people with different colors and shapes and sizes, with different personalities and beliefs, they were all supposed to be together and be what's called the church. That's what we're trying to do right now, which is when a bunch of people come together to try to follow Jesus. It turns out that God's love was big enough for everyone and that they hadn't totally understood it before. And they were still trying to understand it. I'm so glad that God has enough love for every single person, no matter what they look like or what they think like or even sometimes how they act. God has enough love for everyone, and I'm really grateful for that. So we're going to do a repeat after me prayer. So I'm going to say a line, and then I'd like all of you guys to repeat it back. And I'd like our big kids to help with this too, okay? Okay, let's pray. 
Dear God, Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you that your love is big enough for everyone. Thank you for your love. I love you too. I love you too. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You can go back to your seats. Pastor Julia, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> My name is Eunseo Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here. Today um, is the official Sunday of a beginning new appointment year in the North Carolina Conference, which means today is the officially first Sunday of my second year at Rice Field. So thank <laughs> Thanks be to God, and thank you, Ricefield, for accepting me once again as your pastor to serve you and serve this church and serve this community and walk this journey together. So this morning, there is no greater privilege than delivering God's message. The today's passage is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now hear the word of God. Now the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lured by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. And I also heard a voice saying to me, Get a Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or clean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At the very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. Going to verse 15, as I, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak through me and always be on me so that your word might be heard by your people this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In today's scripture, we see Peter returning to Jerusalem after his visit to a Roman centurion called Cornelius, which is described in chapter 10 of Acts. Peter was very excited to share the joy of um, the Gentiles' reception of the gospel. But instead of the celebration, he faced suspicion and criticism for dining with Gentiles. Let's pause and think why this was such a big deal. To understand what's going on, we need to remember back in the Old Testament history. God had Abraham and promised that Abraham 
um, could be the father of a great nation. As a sign of the covenant God made, God commanded that Abraham and all his male descendants be circumcised. And as they grew into a nation, they received specific laws that set them apart from others, especially concerning what they could eat. <coughs> they, Abraham's descendants, were the Jews. Everyone else was considered Gentiles. And at this point in act, all Christians came from Jewish backgrounds. Many believe that God's salvation was meant only for Jews, the people who followed God's laws. And there was a thought that Gentiles could be saved, but they had to adopt all Jewish laws and tradition first actively becoming the Jews first before they could be Christians. And also, Jews were very strict about their food laws. So socializing with the Gentile, especially eating something with Gentile, was seen as turning your back not just on your herit uh, cultural heritage, but also on the special covenant God had made. So now, you can see why the Jewish Christians were more than a little upset. Then, Peter made a choice. In front of the apostles and others who criticized him, instead of getting into a theological debate, Peter shared his personal experience, his vision from God. And the amazing moment when the Holy Spirit came upon the Gentiles. Peter tells a vision he had, a sheet full of unclean animals descending from heaven. This vision was not about changing what was on the dinner menu. It was a profound message about the church, opening its door to all nations. At first, Peter hesitated much like we might hesitate when God nudges us toward something new, challenging us. But God told him, do not call anything impure that I have made clean. Recognizing once again his image in every person. And the climax of Peter's story it's outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Cornelius and his household, clearly illustrating God is at work. This tells us that the church's growth and kingdom's expansion are driven not merely by human effort, but by God's direct intervention. And this is not just rerun of what happened of Acts chapter 10. It's a powerful reaffirmation of God's expansive grace, pushing the church to include more people than it ever imagined before. So it asks us to reflect. How do we react when God surprises us, breaking us out of our conventional boxes? And how do we handle it when God radically shifts our understanding of his kingdom in unexpected ways? Now here, we witness the Peter's faith and Peter's obedience. A man who initially resisted God's new direction because it crossed the traditional lines. But after having the conversation with God repeated, Three times, Peter chose to empty himself, setting aside his preconceptions, and followed God's direction. Even though he was uncertain of the outcome, and he was unclear about what is going on and what was happening in that moment. And once he emptied himself, he became a vessel of God's work, 
facilitating a radical inclusion as a new chapter in the church's history that had once seemed unimaginable. Peter's journey teaches us an important lesson to truly empty ourselves so that God can freely work within us and through us. It doesn't mean we do nothing. Instead, it means filling ourselves with the Holy Spirit, not with our own egos. Just as we pray in the Lord's prayers, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in, in heaven. We are called to align our vision with God's vision, our dreams with God's dreams. We need to remember what Peter did. He was praying. He saw the vision during the prayer. He was filled with the Holy Spirit through the prayer. Prayer was a channel through which God's transformative vision was revealed to Peter. And eventually, in verse 17, Peter acknowledges his emptiness, his humility before God, saying, if then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? Remember, the events in chapter 11 are not the result of human manipulation, or a political scheming. They are purely the result of God's work and divine plan. And this divine initiative is not confined on the pages of history. It's a vibrant and ongoing invitation so far now. Each one of us is called to be like Peter, open to God's surprising and sometimes unsettling invitations that push us beyond our comfort designs. And this is a call for each one of us to shed our biases and limitations, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and to joyfully engage in God's mission. This is how the church grows. Not by clinging to our preconceived notions, but by responding to the Spirit's transformative power. And once you accept God's invitation and empty yourself, consider how you can engage in God's mission as an active participant, not just an observer. And Peter set a powerful example for us. Peter did not just share a meal with the Gentiles. He spent meaningful time with them, fully participating in their lives. So his actions embody the gospel's call to embrace everyone just like Jesus welcomed tax collectors and sinners to dine together, inviting them into the kingdom of God. This act of sharing meal was not merely a, just a social gesture. It's a sign of the new community Christ was creating and Christ is still creating the community that dismantled the barriers between Jew and Gentiles, the clean and unclean. So as we reflect on this passage today, we need to ask ourselves that, who is Gentiles in my life? Who are the people we have viewed as other? And how does our faith challenge us to extend the table of fellowship to them? And how do we respond to those different from us? Do we meter Peter's openness or initial skepticism of Jerusalem church? The early church struggled with this expansion, but ultimately they recognized that God's vision was far broader than their own. So like them, we are called to embrace God's inclusive call and transform our gatherings into places 
where all are truly welcome. This is not just a call to change our minds, but to change our hearts and actions, actively lowering the threshold, removing the barriers, and creating a welcoming table for all. Friends, one year ago, exactly one year ago, you, you have expanded your table to include Asian female pastor from South Korea, 7,100 miles away, right? So today, I call on us to extend our table even further to welcome anyone who seeks God's love, God's grace, and fellowship in this holy space. Once a month, I have a coaching call with another pastor in our conference. And during these calls, I share my ministry and sometimes share my concerns and um, the sixth way to serve my parish better. At the end of each session, um, she asked me, so how can I pray for you? Last month, I asked her to pray for me, saying, Pastor, just please, please pray that do not cross the line in God's work and God's plan. Just let me be an empty vessel so that God can freely play to his work on my plate. So beloved Ricefield, let's not hinder God's work. Let us walk in this courage of Peter, embracing the unexpected with faith and with joy. And let us continue to be a place where everyone finds a home, as you have done for me, and where the table is endlessly expanding, and where there are no outsiders or insiders, only, only beloved children of God. We are all recipients of God's grace, given freely without any cost. So now, it is a time to share that grace with others, also without any cost. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for your word to the lessons of acceptance, courage, and divine guidance. Help us to empty ourselves to see your hand at work in our lives and empower us to follow your spirit lead. In your holy name we pray. Amen. It is time to receive the body of Christ and blood of Christ. Turn to the page 12 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Going to the great Thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there on ending him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Continuing now on the next page. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our communion stewards to come forward. In just a few moments, you will be invited to come and receive the elements. And so I'd like to remind you that this is not my table. This is not Wrightsville's table. This isn't even the United Methodist Church's table. This is God's table. And God has declared that anyone who would like to come may. Whether you are a member of this church or not, whether you're young or old, baptized or unbaptized, you are welcome to come so long as you desire a relationship with Jesus. When you come, the ushers will point you towards one of three stations here in the center or on either side. You'll be given a small piece of bread, and you can go ahead and eat it. And then you'll be given a cup of juice, which you can drink. Um, and then when your cup is empty, you can place it in one of the baskets to each side. If you need gluten-free elements, we have those available here. And I believe that that is all of our instructions. And so if our ushers will come forward, let us now worship God. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good.
invite to stand as we sing closing hymn the one bread one body number 620.
love rice field as we go for it. Let us not hinder God's work. Let us empty ourselves, making room for God's work within. Let every act be an extension of this Lord's table. And let us walk in faith, sharing God's love and God's grace with everyone we encounter in our lives. May our God of love and peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go with you and stay with you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.